play radio. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the Cash Flow Show with Michael Owen and my co-host Chase Howard. Today we got a really special guest here with us, a guy that specializes in something that half of you probably don't even know about or, or maybe scared of it. It's called Subject 2, and we'll jump all into that. First, let's start off with the sponsor for the day. It's going to be Wildcat Lending, a guy I've used several times. His name's Kevin Shipman. Just message us and contact us later on if you would like any information about hard money loans and getting some financing for some of those deals. Okay, so just jumping off into it, we got Tang here. And then Tang, tell me just a little bit about yourself and uh, how, what, what were you doing before you did real estate? Hi guys, uh, my name is Tang Nguyen. Before real estate, I was at a sports bar. Downtown wow. Dallas. Like I didn't getting, know that. You were getting drunk at a sports bar? Or? <laughs> I. <laughs> uh, yeah, some nights. I found out real quickly that I like to be on the patron side other than the uh, business owner. The business side. Yeah. Uh, it was just something that I always wanted to do or have when I was little. Well, when I was 21. Um, then we talked about that when we had lunch. Uh, walked into a. Sherlock's for the first time at 21 and I was like in, in love with the just the atmosphere the, the Just everything about uh, the sports bar. So so what was it about? What was it that made you want to transition in life from going from owning a sports bar? Which I guess could be pretty cool as depending how, how I mean how much you drink down the table. Yeah, and then <laughs> going over into what made you want to switch over to real estate? Really, it was a blessing in disguise. We actually closed the doors down in uh, 2014. Um, then I had my son, January 1st, and I was able to enjoy all of his first, which was pretty cool, all of his uh, steps, walks, mm -hmm. brushing his teeth, everything. So um, then my wife saw a uh, one of those infomercials about real estate, how to invest with little to no money, and it was like a free seminar at a hotel hotel so I was like cool let's, let's go check it out I always wanted to get in real estate but I didn't know how and so now it's perfect opportunity I didn't have anything else to do so uh, went to that uh, paid for the three-day event went to that and of course they got me to buy the platinum package oh platinum that, 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 that was be a good one that was forty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Whoa! Was that just yeah. a, the, the, the Dude, level? We just talked about this what? last week. Have, this is yeah. blowing my mind. Forty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Did you buy a house with that? No, I bought a lot of education. Uh, found out real quick it was a, it was a nationwide company. Yeah, and I didn't have the local support. So let me pause here just for a second. We'll come back to this. First, I want to say that Tang Nguyen, it's an honor to have you on our show. Oh, yeah. I mean, this Thank is you. really amazing to get you on our show. He just spoke last week, I believe, in front of hundreds, if not thousands of people. I mean, it was pretty sweet. There's a lot of people there at the, the Propelio event. Yes. Unfortunately, I didn't get to make it. I had my son's soccer game and a bunch or soccer practice and a bunch of other stuff going on. But really wish I could have made it there. I'm, I, uh, I've checked out the notes. I watched the videos and stuff, and you did an awesome job. But first of all, Tang Nguyen is a master at what we do, or at what he does, which is sub two. Um, I haven't had a chance to uh, to really dive too much into the sub two side of things, and a lot of our listeners are newbies, so I'd like to be able to break that down. Subject two, um, if, if you want to give just a brief definition of what sub two means before we dive back in. Uh, purchasing property subject to just basically means that you're buying a property subject to the existing loan, mortgage, lien. On the so property. you don't have to requalify. I don't have to requalify. I am just uh, paying on their behalf. Okay. The mortgage stays does stays in the seller's uh, name, but they do deed me the property. I have control. Wow. So. Yeah. So then, well, let's go back. Let's uh, change gears back into where you spent forty-seven thousand. Well, I just, I just want to, yeah. I just want to go back to what we were talking about last week, and yeah. just so everybody knows that we have a heavy, heavy hitter in the room. Yeah, yeah, that did fact. spend that forty-seven thousand five hundred that you oh, and yeah. I were talking about last week. You spent it. Did it, it work out it. for you? It, it did. Um, it doesn't work for most because. The, the guys who does have 47000 to spend, 
you know, they're yeah, it, they're it doesn't right. affect them as much, right? right? They they're like ah, oh, try this out and then move on to something else. But I let's be nice. I, I did on borrowed money. Yeah. So I had a lot riding on it. Also, I had um, also my wife and my son. Hey, babe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what love is your name? Give her, give her Anne, her. Anne. Hi, that's Anne. her name. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I bet so, she was worried. Once you spent that money, did she start she, freaking out a bit? She saw, she knew how hard I was working. I was, I was pounding the, the videos, the, the training courses. We flew to how many, I don't know how many cities, because it was like a nationwide course. So every month we'll fly out to a different city to have like a, three, four day training event. Wow. And it was like intense. Yeah. And so I knew I wanted to do this after seeing um, all the successful guys that's out there. I was following, I was just, you know, just looking on YouTube, um, figuring out what, who did this, who did that locally yeah. or whatever. So um, what did it provide for you? Like, what did they give you? The, so they, they made you travel, right? They, they made you travel, travel, but the thing is, it was, heavy intense training okay on certain subjects uh marketing that was the best out of all the class i took it was the marketing class which was that's the bread and butter in this game yeah if you're not marketing you're 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 nobody right nobody knows you nobody knows that you're buying houses right so guys get out there and just put the word out there you're buying houses so um, that's what i started with and Travis Howard, shout out to Travis Howard. He taught me that. He taught Are we that related? class. No, we I'll, might be related. Maybe. Yeah. Last name's Howard too. <laughs> and he Hello mentioned Travis, the <laughs> brother from another mother. Just keep marketing, market every way you can. Um, he believed in seven ways, and just stick with it, right? And if something falls, you have the other ones to just keep moving. So you mean seven ways as far as seven ways techniques of, or okay. mar- uh, strategy? So okay. it, either it could be like. Bandit signs, letters, postcards, door knocking. Seven ways of marketing. Seven ways of marketing. Did you hit the same person seven times with seven different ways of marketing? Uh, or did you just kind of different. blast it out there? And what I did stuff? was I took each piece and I scaled it and kind of not mastered it, but I just scaled it as much as I can and then I jumped on the next one. And yeah. I scaled that one and jumped on the next one. Scaled Makes on sense. That one. So now I had marketing pieces going out everywhere yeah. at a different level. But I was only at like four or five. Yeah. And then now the social media, that's the biggest one so far right now. Yeah. Uh, for me. So. On Facebook, primarily. Facebook, Instagram, buy the house on Snapchat. Really? Yeah. How does that, that work? Uh, well, it leaks after 30 seconds after you open it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have to act really quick. Yeah, you got to be really quick within 30 seconds. No, it was just uh, showing uh, my group of friends what I do every day. Just going out, buying houses, going out, helping uh, certain homeowners through su- certain situations, and just so happened that a a friend that followed me had a uh, employee that was going through something, and uh, that's how we connected. So, yeah, very so cool. you never know. So you just put yourself out there and and uh, see what happens. Right. So, well, see. Bri- Bryce McKinley's on here. He says Tang is my brother from another mother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Tang in the crew. <laughs> so that's that's funny, the brother from another mother, because you own a company called the Odd Brothers. Yes. And yes. so it's three three dudes that are all completely different, you know, and they say brother from another mother. But what what's with the Odd Brothers? What is it? Uh, that just came about. Well, the funny story is, I joined another education group. <laughs> oh no! Locally, after the big one. Did you pay for it? Yes, I oh. paid for that one too. But I paid for the network. I knew what I was going to get myself into this right. one. It was, I saw the network. I saw it was local. So right. I, I joined that group. And that's where uh, my business just went to another level. Because I was uh, connecting with people who was local. Yeah. And they're doing businesses, they're doing uh, deals. Right. So I had to talk to all the right guys, took notes, took notes, took notes. Right. Of all the questions that they have. Because eventually I'll come across and... It's true. Like yeah. I have notes of, it's like, oh, I did hear about this divorce. So I hear, I heard about this, uh, this type of lien. How to how to remove it. Right. And so, uh, so I did. I joined that, and when I was in that group, um, these two other guys came up to me and approached me. It's like, hey, should I join this group? I was like, well, what are you, what are you trying? You just getting started? It's like, yeah. Well, we have like twenty, thirty thousand spend. Um, 
should we join this group? I'm like, let's go to lunch. Let's yeah. go to lunch. So we went to lunch, and I told him, you can join it, but I'd rather you spend that on marketing. Right. And I'll tell you what to do. Just, just get some bandit signs and just go out there and get a deal. Tane, right. you've got me eating my words from last week, man. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, because I was all against most of these guru groups. I mean, because for the most people, the money that they spend on these groups, they could easily easily have bought their first deal or started marketing. Yes. So, but for you, it really worked out. It did. I mean, because you're able to buy into that network, and your network is your net worth. Well, I would so say, sense. too, that he's talking about something that's very engaging and didn't drop them. So he well, was true. There were several different classes beyond that to keep you invested yeah. into the whole system. To where I would, from experience, well, I've seen a lot of those are not like that. Right. They, do, they come for free, give me $1,500, do this big platinum. And, and they then, tempt you with those breakfast burritos. They get you in the door with those breakfast burritos. They're like, here, come get these free OJs, free coffee, and breakfast burritos. And, of course, I'm like, I can't. I can't resist that. And then they say, well, by the way, the next breakfast burrito is going to cost you $7,500. Yeah. Mm. But it comes with salsa. Though. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. that's true. This <laughs> one comes with salsa and some guy named Travis Howard who's willing to help you out with everything. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Either way, most of them are not, you know, of that fashion. Right. So let's talk about this. You're, from the time that you got into this and you're 47000 in the hole, or if, if it wasn't gotten 2000 for the other class or whatever that was, maybe mm-hmm. 50000 how long was it before you did your very first deal, and what was that deal like? So I started learning about real estate in March, April 2015, and I did that for about four months straight. Just learn, 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 and I knew that, hey, I got to get out there and do something. So I finally started marketing like August, September, Yeah. and I started picking up like like just the, the attention, like, oh, they're calling my signs. Okay. I think I know what I'm doing. And then when I joined um, the second group yeah. in November, October. So did you buy a deal between? Did you buy anything? I, I, did, I did one deal. I did one deal, and uh, she's still actually one of my greatest supporters. Um, she was going through foreclosure, and we, we stopped it before foreclosure. And... It was, it was crazy because she had nowhere else to go. Like, yeah. she had no one else. And she's like, I don't know if I can trust you. And I was like, well, just because it was my first deal. Too. Yeah. So, but I, she gave me an opportunity, and I showed her what I can do. I gave her actually some, some funds to, you know, move on with her, her life. But the thing is, I spoke to her for, like, days and days in a row and asked her, what, where can you go? It's like, well, I have a daughter, but... Um, we don't, we're not on good terms. I was like, well, I think this might be a call. Like, it, it might be a reason why to go back and talk to her. Let's yeah. just, just call her. Yeah. And she's like, yeah. So next day, she said, I called my daughter. She said that I can stay with her now. Oh, awesome. And so I was like, hey, there you go. And so she moved in with the daughter. A couple months later, she calls me. And she's like, we reconnected. We're, we're, we're good now. I can see my grandkids now. And just about three weeks ago, she called me again and said that she just remarried. Oh, wow. And she sent me pictures, and she's still my biggest supporter. So. That's awesome. Yeah. So tell, tell us about that deal, though. What, I mean, what city it was, was it in? It was in Fort Worth. It was a, um, it was a what was it? A condo. Okay. A nice condo. Um, what was it worth? It's worth about 120 Do you still own it? No, okay. I didn't know what I was going to So I just wholesaled the first deal. Yeah. So I got under contract um, for what she, she did owe. She owed like about 35 yeah. on it. And you paid her arrears? I paid, no, um, I just paid off the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. So actually, I got under contract for that amount. And then, of course, I sold the contract right, for right. about 50. Okay. So I, I made about 15, but I also gave her 2,000 back just. For because, living expenses yeah. mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. Was thirty five what she wanted? She didn't know what she was. Oh, okay. She was just like so lost. She was like, I just need another. Well, actually, she wanted a car. She needed a vehicle, and because someone stole her car too. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, Rough. like her. She lost. It was crazy. She was just spiraling. Like she had a boyfriend that just took everything. She was. She actually had a good business before all this happened. 
online eBay business, yeah. and uh, he just wiped her out. And oh, no. She was just, yeah. But, I mean, you helped her out of that situation. You know, I mean, that yeah. helped you, obviously, but it also helped her, and then she re kindled that relationship with her daughter that's pretty cool so that was your first wholesale first one what about your first sub two how did that, that came, one work out and of course that came when i joined the next uh group yeah and that's shout out to uh phil and Shinoa, the big dog group um <laughs> that group i um i had the the network now yeah and i met uh, a gentleman by the name of jose hinosa he was doing some crazy stuff and i was like what what are you doing? He's like, you know, I do owner finance. It pays. It, it'll pay in the long run. I was like, yeah, I'm all about cash flow. Yeah. Right. So uh, my marketing went out. So I have cars with decals on it. Right. And a gentleman called me on it. Actually, I put a decal on the guy's car, and a guy called off that decal and said, Hey, I got I got some properties I need to sell. So I, I was like, Okay, cool. Where is it? It's like Box Springs. I'm like. I don't know where, where is that it? is. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've never heard of Box Springs. So I was like, okay, I can meet you over there. And it was like an hour and a 15 minute drive from the house. Yeah. Didn't know that was going to be my first deal. So I just went over there, saw that he had two properties across from each other. Brick houses? Brick houses. Yeah. Oh, good, because if it was a mobile, Chase would buy it. <laughs> yeah, sure. So he, he yeah, that's like, new. I don't buy all mobiles. And this yeah. was like in learn that November, almost December. He was like, yeah, I just need to get rid of these two houses. Uh, he was being a little upfront, like, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I just want to cash out. And then we kept talking and talking, and he's like, okay, here's the story. <laughs> My mom became really good friends with these two, and they were supposed to collect rent from these two properties that right. I own. Well, they came really good friends and she's like, oh, I'll pay you next week. Yeah, I'll two pay good of friends. Yeah, and yeah. so when it was time for me to make my mortgage payment, I went to my mom to collect the money and my mom was like, well, they haven't paid me in two, three months. Oh, so no. I don't have the money. And so they're behind, both houses are behind, but they have rentals in it, renters right. in there. So I was like, well, what do you, what do you wanna do? He's like, well, I'm torn. Do I reinstate these, uh, pay this, or buy my kids presents for Christmas? Oh, and I'm like, man. oh man, you can't. You know, that's yeah. that's tough, right? And so I was like, okay, well, let's let's come up with something. Let's let's see if I can do it. The only way I can do this if I just take over the mortgage on on both. I get you pay the up. arrears, right? I pay the arrears, and then I'll pay you an amount that you're comfortable with on both houses, right? And he's like, okay, that sounds good, and called Jose and said, Jose, I think I got one of those uh, subject two deals. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, just just pay the arrears, do this, do this, and then um, when you sell it, I'll show you how to sell it. Yeah. And get owner finance, right? So, so yeah, so I paid the arrears. How much were the it. arrears on that one? They're each about like four or 5,000. Okay. Oh, no so that's wasn't too bad. I got yeah, lucky. Those like, were the good old days. That's those awesome. Those really good old days, yeah. right? And uh, yeah. one, he didn't have that much equity in it. It was like, it was worth, it had like 60,000 left on the on the balance and it's worth about 90. So well, there's still a little much. bit of equity A little there. bit, a little bit. So I gave him, um, I think 5,000 for that house. Yeah. And then the next house, had a, quite a bit of equity on that one. It had, I think he owed thirty thousand. So did so, you did you take over the existing mortgage only, or did you have a note to him as well for the equity portion? I did. So yeah. I took over the note on both, but then I created another note with him to make payments on. Um, I think I gave him thirty thousand. Yeah. So I made a payment on that too. Very cool. So I mean, that's mm -hmm. so creative. Oh yeah, that's amazing how you yeah, can structure I didn't have, these. Things. I didn't have the you know money to pay all the equity, but I was like, hey, can you just stay with me? Yeah, and I'll make you monthly payments. And so we did that. Um, got the renters out, paid them. I said, hey guys, you guys got to go. I'll Cash for keys. A couple hundred bucks if yeah. you I can get move out in a couple of days. Yeah, they weren't then, making payments anyways, yeah, so it's so either cash fine. for keys or an eviction. Yeah, and I've know, never done an eviction. All I know is that hey, money talks. It's right here. Just, right. Just. You know, yeah, take this cash. Yeah. And so they got out. I I put in like three, four grand in each just to clean it up, paint mm -hmm. here and there. And then I I was like, how much can I sell it for? And Jose was like, sell it for a hundred, a hundred thousand dollars. Each? 
each. Wow. I was like, 100000 you sure? I looked at the comps. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. He's like, because you're not, you're, you're selling a different type of uh, property. Right. You're selling an opportunity for, for someone who can't get traditional financing. Right. To live in a house. That's right. worth more than what the house is worth. Right. Right. And I was like, I, I was like, I don't understand, but let's keep going. Right. Yeah. And so he's like, all right, let me do your open house. He, he puts out a few signs and I watched the phone blow up like crazy. I was like, what the heck? Yeah. In Bulk this? Springs. In Bulk yeah. Springs. Wow. And then, that nobody knows. So. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so he put the signs up like 9, 10 in the morning. We had a buyer at 12 o'clock. Like wow. Three hours, two, three hours. For $100,000. Like, for 100000 10000 down. Wow. Perfect. And I was like, is it this easy? <laughs> like, yeah. like, what? what that's going? crazy. But So he, your buyer there, what were they paying? So that buyer... Pay ten thousand down. Uh -huh. uh, we did uh, nine point nine nine interest, uh -huh. thirty year note. So that one total all in was a thousand dollars. Yeah. But the underlying mortgage is six hundred bucks. So you cash flow. Cash flow about four hundred bucks, bucks a month on one house. On the first house. And then you don't. You're not responsible for taxes or insurance. Ultimately. Yes. I mean, you are middle of the line, but once that buyer, that in buyer purchases it, now they're responsible for taxes and insurance on the property. So Correct. all you are is the bank. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. That's yeah. cool. You're just collecting the cash flow. And so that was the very first owner finance deal, and I fell in love doing that ever since because you're it's it's pretty much a win 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 situation here because right. you I, I saved him from foreclosure. And then I put a family that's will never get an opportunity from the bank. Right. It's just they have great income. Yeah. They just don't have a, a, a not that great of credit. Right. Right. But this is when you're building credit. This is how you can build credit. Are they still in the house? They're still in the house. Wow. Both of them. I think all of my properties, but one, is still in the house. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So how many deals have you done since then? Do you think ballpark? I know there's. I know it's a lot, but. Uh. A little over a hundred, almost. I, yeah. And of those, how many are under your belt right now that you're holding on to? Twenty-five. Wow. And average cash flow about four hundred. Three hundred fifty to four hundred dollars. Holy smokes, that's so, awesome! Yeah. And the coolest yeah. part about that is you're not monitoring tenants. That's my biggest pain in the butt right now. I'm, I'm getting text messages right now of a house of mine that's trashed. Yeah. From people. I mean, I was just telling you mm -hmm. before the show. I have a house this morning. Don't worry about the end. Okay, so. With our marketing, we're, we're marketing to pre-foreclosures, we're marketing to people who are uh, you know, a little late on their payments. You can always buy that list or go to the city and right. go to a tax office and get that list. And so we'll market, we'll market, and then once we get a call, uh, we go through the whole, what's going on? What can I do to, to help, All right? Um, the one advantage I have now is because it's the way I market because I say I can stop your foreclosure and keep you in your house. That's that changes the whole um, right dynamic of it because they're getting hounded. They're getting hit with so many letters, so many like I want to buy your house. So you, the homeowner that's getting foreclosed on, you can keep them in the house. I do my best to keep them yeah. in the house. Yeah, I, I run out. I run through all the options with them first. Personally, financially, right. So I want to get into their lives and see what's possible, right? Right. And uh, sometimes it's an understandable situation why they're in the foreclosure. It's yes. not just hey, they can't pay the bills anymore. Sometimes it could be a divorce, Life happens. or Life happens. you know, they lost a job. Now they have a job back. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So if they have no money to give you for a down payment, do you still do that? And turn around, and make it a rental, or how you? It's, it's all depending on the situation. I'll I'll use one example right now. And uh, what is that house? Because I haven't even been to the house yet, but it's already cash flowing like six hundred bucks. So how did I get that lead? Oh, Josh Fuller, he brought me a lead that um, where a homeowner was behind, I think eight thousand. Yeah. Right. And I spoke to the husband and wife just to see what's going on. The husband had two knee surgeries, like November. Yeah. Like October, November. He was. He was out. He was a Marine. He was oh, a wow. Marine. So all the jumping in and out of planes yeah. and everything took a toll on his knees. So I was like, man, I got to help these guys out, you know. 
Um, so he's like, well, I'm back on my feet. I'm, I'm, I'm working now. I'm, I'm trying to get back into it. I said, so what do you do? He's like, I actually do remodeling work. I'm a GC. Yeah. I do a lot of uh, bathroom remodeling. And, um, oh, and that's hard on your knees. Too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's like, but I had two knee surgeries, and then I had, like, another surgery, like, in, back in February. So that's what put us back. And I was like, oh, man, okay. So, uh, so and my wife's retired. Yeah. But she has a check that comes in every month. Is there any way you can stop the foreclosure and let us stay in the house? Yeah. I was like, well, typically I don't because I own or finance all my houses. Right. And he's like, well, any way we can rent? I was like, I, I can, but I'm going to be out of pocket 8000 Right. It has to be a, a, a deal that makes sense for both of us, especially a business side. Right. right. And so he's like, okay, well, I'm paying right now. 800 bucks a month was it gonna take for me to stay in this house and I looked at the rents over there I'm like man the rents are like 14 1500 bucks Wow yeah I was like if I do this I have to charge the market rent yeah so he was like okay we can do it I was like well how can you do it now if you know you couldn't do it back mm -hmm. then you can do it now it's like well I'm back on my feet I can work now yeah my wife is getting a, a check every month for 1100 bucks, so that covers almost all of it. Now yeah. I just got to work and make another 400 bucks. I can do it. Right. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to give, give you an opportunity to do that. So you rented it to him? I turned it into a rental, but I put terms in. I was like, hey, I'm not a landlord. Yeah. I don't do landlord stuff. Right. You know, if you can take this house and, not, and I don't have to worry about any repairs, right. you can stay in the house. He's like, well, yeah. I'm used to fixing anything in the house anyway, so right. so it's kind of like a never have to repair house. That's awesome, right? Yeah, I never Remember. seen the house. Yeah, I never seen the house. I forgot where it was. It's in Ranger Highway. I don't know where. Yeah, it was. yeah. So, right. um, so I never seen the house, and on top of that, I was like, well, you say you do tile, right? Okay, let me send you some work. I want to see. Actually, I'm, let me see you some work. So he sent me some pictures of some some of his uh, work. And I was like, hey, it's not bad. So I like, cool. So I called my uh, my cousin called me. It's so having my cousin Paul call me and say, Hey, you got a towel guy. I was like, Let me see. I got this guy that I just met that yeah. I just saved from foreclosure, but he, his pictures look pretty legit. Yeah. I'm gonna send him to him and you you tell you make your decision whether you go with him or not. And so I sent them over there. Um, my cousin did use him. He said he's very satisfied with his work. So he did a good job. He did a good job. See, that's awesome. That's building your network there. And so now I'm like, the more I feed him, the better because I'm make sure I'm getting paid on the house because right. he's getting the income. So, right. so it worked out, and they've been great for the past three months. Wow, so, that's good, man. So, so you're, worked out. basically, you're taking the extra bankroll from the higher rent. To, to make up the $8,000 that you invested? Yes. They never gave you a lump sum. They never gave me a lump sum. It's, it's a long-term play, but it's like yeah. a, a two-year play. It's easier being there without the 8000 as opposed to if we have 35000 in arrears. Exactly. Because now we can't play that card. So it's all, yeah, it's, it's right. case by case study. Right. So. Okay, so we identify somebody. We're figuring out what they owe. We're going to pay arrears. What's our next step? Do we... So we the next step is we, we figure out if they can stay in or not. That, yeah. They just happen that they can. But most, they don't even want the house. They want to downsize. They want to, they want a new start. So we figure out, okay, what do you need? Like we, we look at all the numbers, the equity, how much they're in the rears. Depending on that, we can give you some cash to, you know, to make the property, yeah. move on, right? Mm -hmm. And most of the time we'll, you know, like I can't see myself giving nothing or anything like that. It's just... You, you, you learn about them, you right, and so we come up with a fair number that they're they're definitely happy with. Like right. today, we're moving another family out of the house. Like I'm literally getting the whole U-Haul, doing everything. Oh, you're you're them. paying for the U-Haul. You're helping them move. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we do that. Next is uh, take it to title. We get a contract. Take it to title. Make sure the title is clean, and then. Make sure that's the only lien, or is it any other lien that we're going to take over? Right. Right. So once we take, is it a special contract that you're using? It's just a check contract. Really? Okay. And we we yeah. do add a subject to addendum attached to that. Uh, most 
attorneys that are specializing in this will have Real one to their own. Yeah, yeah, they'll have one for themselves, and if you use them, you can use their uh, contracts. And so. so, is it the same as an assumption? No, it's not. Definitely not the same. Um, that's one thing that people get confused about. It's not an assumption. When you assume another loan, you're actually going to apply and putting your name out there. I you, see. Yeah. So yeah. I am taking this up too. I'm paying on their behalf. So it's not. Gotcha. It's but then now that person that you took over sub two payments, mm -hmm. what happens if in two or three years they want to go buy another house? So how does that affect their credit? So it helps their credit when I do reinstate the loan. That in itself, they'll jump 40, you're 50 payments. points. Yeah, yeah 50, 40, sense. 50 points once I reinstate the loan. And now I'm making on-time payments on their behalf. That credit builds. That's so awesome. where they're at, it's going to take more than two, three years to build up. And yeah. most of them are, they don't want a house anymore. Right. They, right. they, they, they went through that whole part of having a house and they're like no we're, we're comfortable we're, just, we're fine with an apartment we're fine living with my daughter and they yeah. have not they do they, they question me but at the same time we have ways to uh, get a leasing agreement between us to yeah. show that hey they're not liable for this right. they're actually making money or breaking even on this property so, so it's not a liability when anymore. they go get a new loan from a bank they can just show that hey I have this lien but I also have this lease agreement or this, this owner finance mm -hmm. note that pays for it. Exactly. So it shouldn't affect their ability. Shouldn't affect shouldn't. their ability to get another loan yeah. in a couple of years. I mean, a lot can happen in three years. They can get married, you know, and yeah. do whatever. So let's keep walking through this, and then we're going to, we'll, we'll hit back on the uh, them having the right to call a note. Yeah. Because we don't want to get off into big of a tangent. Yeah. So paperwork-wise, we went to the company. We checked out eight other liens. Uh, we're getting the basically we're the getting, property deeded. Yeah, so we get we got to get the reinstatement. Uh, that's the most important thing. You got to get it from, a letter from the new trustees or the attorneys because if you miss the payment by like one cent, they're not gonna take it. They want the exact dollar amount. So that's that's key to this. Like end of the month, I'm at the bank all day doing wires to make sure all the house that I'm reinstating is is to the T. Check every numbers three, four times because you wired to the wrong account, they don't get a wire, I mean, things can happen, so. Yeah. So once you reinstate the loan, we close on the property, now they deed me the house, and now it's, now it's, uh, now I find my exit strategy, right? First is the acquisition, so it's buying stuff too is the acquisition strategy. You're, like you buy it cash, you buy it with a loan, you right. buy it with hard money, I'm buying it sub two. Right. And then now I figure out the best exit strategy. Um, whether it's renting out, if it's like very little uh, reinstatement, yeah, and I want to keep a rental, or but my favorite, of course, is owner finance, yeah, because I get the money that I put in uh, that I reinstated. Let's say I reinstated it was ten thousand dollars, and I put in three thousand in repairs. I'm going to ask for at least thirteen or twenty, thirteen to twenty payment. for the down payment, mm -hmm. yeah. so I get my money back out. And that's our cash flow. So you're in a lot of these for zero. Well, I mean, you can be in a property it, yeah. once it's owner financed on the backside for zero dollars. Mm because -hmm. I remember last week we had that person that asked us how you do zero money investing, and this is one of the ways of doing that. Well, there's still money up front. There's money, money up, up front. front. That's true. But once they give the down payment, and you're sometimes you could be net zero on that. Two to three month float. Yeah, that's what you need if if you plan on doing this strategy. You're gonna need some 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 capital just in case, right? You don't right. get an owner finance. You gotta be able to make the payments. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's your obligation, your your ethical obligation to, to do that. Moral Makes sense. obligation to do that. Because you're you build a relationship with the seller and you told them that you're gonna do this. You yeah. have to do this. Right. So Well and you have a note or a document, a binding document that says you're going to do that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now that you've got your bandit signs out, you've already closed on the property for the first purchase, the sub the two purchase. Mm -hmm. You start throwing some bandit signs out, you post an ad on Facebook, you find that right buyer. Mm -hmm. What's the step there? The next step is to get them qualified. So we'll send them to a loan, uh, an RMLO. Registered mortgage loan officer. Residential mortgage there it loan is. officer. Yeah. You're yeah. That's close. <laughs> <laughs> Residential. So, <laughs> So they'll, they'll go through the process just like getting a loan from a bank. But the thing is, we look at income. Like yeah. That's more important. 
credit we, we look at we do look, look at credit but we're not like oh they're not gonna get they're not gonna get this house right so once they get approved base and I, I make the judgment I go okay this guy makes three four times as much as what the the monthly mortgages I believe he, he should is that get. typical what you're looking for like three and a half three times? times yeah okay three and a half to four times and once that looks good uh, we have a seven day grace period and then we we go to closing yeah and once we close, I also have a loan servicing company to what's, handle all that. What's the seven day grace period? Touch on that real quick. That's a like little, a seasoning period. Uh, well, that gives the buyer opportunity to think and right. You know, like, hey, should I make this decision? Is it a big decision or not? Like, yeah, they, makes sense. Like, I have to give them that. It's a law, I guess. And yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I love yeah. it when it's a law. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and and so. It does. It gives them like time to think about. Hey, they're about to make a big decision, a right. like, thirty-year decision. So well, it makes sense. Yeah, and you don't want them to just jump into exactly, it and then yeah. come back and say, "Oh, well, I made that decision too quick." Exactly. Seven days. Is so plenty seven days of is plenty of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, once we close, uh, we also set up loan servicing company to handle all the payments. Yeah. Because I do not. That's not what I do. Right. Right. <laughs> um, so I have a company that handles all payments to them. Uh, like they pay the loan servicing company. That loan servicing company pays my underlying lien. So, so is that all essentially auto pay? It's like an auto pay type scenario? They can. They can set up an online payment where it's automatic drafts. Yeah. And then we do the same thing on our end underlying lien. Do they charge you? We charge the end buyer for using this service. So, so. the R, so that loan servicer is essentially free to you, because yes. the end buyer is the one that's paying for that. Yes. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. So. And then you turn around and use that same thing to pay their mortgage. Is that what you're doing? The underlying lien. Right. Yes. Well, we usually pay up front, like a month or two, mm-hmm. on the underlying lien. So that lien never gets late. Right. The you can't have that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're paying a couple of months in advance when you first acquisition it. Right? That that's that's a way to stay ahead. Yeah, yeah stay ahead, pretty Perfect. much. Yeah, because you never know what can happen if the the new borrower if like, they're late. A payment. You yeah, don't want to get late fees on your side. Exactly. Right. Makes mm-hmm. sense. So, who manages that? Like, I mean, do you check in every month, or does that? You have to check in. Yeah. yeah. Does that loan servicer automatically send them late fees and stuff? If yes, they're late? they. they they deal with the borrower. They tell them, "Hey, if you're gonna be late, this is the fee." They they know all the fees. Yeah. So yeah. they gotta collect that amount. So it's just a lot of, um, a lot of communicating from the bank to the borrower. Yeah. And I just check in and make sure they're doing it. That's it. Okay. So we're here. We're at the point where we've purchased. We've we've got our in buyer. Now that in buyer makes you know so many months worth of payments and they stop paying. What happens? The in buyer. Uh, the owner they'll, finance. Buyer. They will get letters, you know. Uh, Do you send those letters. or the servicer? No, the loan servicing company nice. takes right. care of everything. Oh, dude, so you're pretty well hands off after well, you. Well, for right now. Yeah, for, for right now. now. For yeah. now. Until if it comes to that point, which I haven't, uh, except for one, but that one, I actually paid him to leave. Like uh, cash on, for keys again? Yes. Okay. And I, that, that was a different situation. He was a great uh, borrower. He. Put twenty thousand down. Wow! Didn't have a late payment, but he uh, had a some family uh, event that came up, family emergency. His his mother in law in in uh, Denver yeah uh, had cancer, so oh, his wow. wife and kids just took off and just went to go uh, to be with the mother. And he's like, I'm here alone. I, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. I, I I work and I work like this for my family, and they're back there, so I have to leave too. So. Pretty much just the keys. I, I gotta leave. I don't even know how to sell this house. I don't know what to do. Wow. And so I was like, okay, let me come over and check up on the house. He actually put in another fifteen thousand dollars in upgrades. Wow. In the house because he was gonna live there. I mean, um, he was also in construction. And so I was like, okay, well, you just gonna leave? It's like I have to. You know, I was like, well, th- the way it works, I have to do like a deed in lieu. Like a friendly foreclosure, deed right. and just uh, deed back the house, and then um, and I gave him ten thousand to walk away, and he was like, kind of like, yeah, why are you giving me money? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he did ask for some, but he didn't expect that amount, 
And so that was, he was just like, wow, that's awesome. If I come back, I'm making sure I'll buy another house from you. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so. You're making it to where every, it's mutually beneficial for exactly. everyone. And this that's is awesome, the best man. case scenario that this happened in this way. Right. Because the other side of the spectrum is we can have a squatter that does I'm not going to pay anything. You have mm -hmm. to foreclose on me. And, and you have to evict. Yeah. And yeah. I may end up pouring concrete in this, in this house. Uh, right. So yeah. what happens back when... And it's, I mean, the possibilities there are just crazy. Right, what it can is. happen. But in, in that sense, but, they could be months. I but mean, to the way months. that Tang does business so far, he's always making sure that their best interest is in mind first. So we Absolutely. always want to make sure that we're not, you know, if we could have given that homeowner 2500 bucks to move or 10000 bucks to move, we want to make sure that if that, if that makes sense for our business model, we need to go ahead and offer that. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just thinking, worst case scenario, yeah. these are things that we have to be thinking about. Yeah. It's a fact of... You may go several months through the foreclosure process, mm -hmm. not taking in any money on that property. Yeah. And you have to be able to bankroll that or exactly. true to support that. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's what we brought up. Like, you got to have that bankroll if you plan on doing this strategy. Yeah, it's not uh, that it it could be that easy, but it's the relationship you build with your end buyer. Yeah, uh, you're qualifying them, and that's one way I, I look in their lives and I. You know, just yeah. make sure. You don't want to get somebody in the house that can't afford the house. Then, even if a guy has twenty five, thirty thousand dollars down, I might not pick him compared to uh, a guy with fifteen, twenty, but he has a, a, a family to support. And right. this guy is, you know, just it, 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 yeah. it's a feel. You got to make sure he's going to be right. Right, a right fit. And I, I'd rather give it to the young family than, you know, a single guy or. With ten dogs, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've had a lot that you've learned in the last uh, so many years, oh, but yeah. have you ever had a nightmare deal? Just a complete trash, lost money on it. I think today deal. is the one year anniversary of it, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was bad. I was I bought a house sight unseen. But not really. Uh, I I I called them on the pre foreclosure list. Yeah. And she was like, oh, no, I'm taking care of it. Don't worry. I got it under control like two weeks ago. Right? We like, hear two that weeks a lot. Prior yeah, to auction. Mm -hmm. And then I was coming up the highway, and I was like, I remember calling this one house on this exit right here. Let me just call her. It was that Monday before foreclosure. And I was like, I'm just going to give it a shot. Yeah. Because I actually have a house next door that's owner finance. Oh, wow. So I was like, so I called her, and she was like, What's up? Like, hey, you still have the house? Like, man, it's too late. I'm losing it tomorrow. I was like, no, 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 it's not too late. Give me a shot. And so it just so happened that the lender was local, a local investor. Perfect. I was, mm -hmm. I was yeah. like, oh, crap. I was like, so do you have his number? Like, yeah, I got his number. So you got his number? Oh, let me call him. <laughs> You're making this easy. Yeah, yeah, I was like, hey, Mr. Lender, um, this, uh, you know, this young lady, she's about to lose her house. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, well... I want I want to reinstate the loan and take over the mortgage and and, and I'm, I'm telling them everything what I was gonna do. I was yeah. like, you're an investor, you should know yeah. what's going on. It's like about if I do this, you can't like, you make sure we can't call. Not the gonna note. call the note. Yeah, not yeah, call right. the note. He's like, yeah, man, if you can make payments, I'm good. I'm happy. Perfect. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, the note was like fifty thousand, and I was like, okay, the the monthly payment was like seven hundred bucks. I was like, cool. I think I can do this. And so I reinstated the loan. It was like five grand, and then I paid her fifteen hundred bucks just for letting me do this. Right. And, and she was like, "Yeah, go ahead." And then I go to the house. And, oh no! And then I'm like, because I'm thinking I'm in it for sixty five hundred. It's not bad. Yeah. I go into the house. It used to be a two one, then it was a three two. Now it's a 4-2, so it's like an addition on oh, top of no. an addition on top of uh, an addition. Probably non-permitted, never permitted. And this foundation was the craziest foundation I've ever seen. Um, I got a couple quotes. The best guy came, 49 peers on the house. Oh, wow. 49. 49 oh, peers. Yeah, one, that's a lot. That's yeah. crazy. And so, so I was like, all right, we've got to do the, the foundation work. And of course, what's next? The plumbing, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. when you do that much foundation, you're gonna oh, yeah. jack up all the plumbing. I mean, I plumbing. think one side was like 11 inches, <laughs> one corner. And it, it was bad. I did one in, that was five inches sink. It was a two story, so 11 inches is blowing my mind. It was bad. That's really um, bad. And so it was ten thousand, <laughs> about ten thousand more to 
do the foundation work. And then I started demoing. And then I had a dumpster. Yeah. Well, when you have a dumpster in war zones, it fills up fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the neighbors... All the neighbors Everybody using like, your dumpster. Yeah, I was like, I got three couches in there all of a sudden. And yeah. I got, like, mattresses. And yeah. All. I'm like... <laughs> I just, got, for this, everybody else's I just got this dumpster like yeah. on Monday. It's like full on Wednesday. I'm like, do they still... make like cages for the top? They should. I mean, they should. They that would should. Be to where you can yeah. just lock it up at night. And so that's like, funny. And this is it was hot. You know, I'm like yeah. I don't deal with the heat that well. And like, so I was just stressing out on this one. So I get uh, Nexus Plumbing. I get uh, some diggers, and it's that's a hundred bucks a foot, right? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, a good yeah, yeah. So I got this crew. Uh, to dig, it's like thirty feet. Oh no! Right, I'm like, okay, I gotta do this right, and I did, I subcontracted. I didn't get it from the plumbers. The plumbers were trying to charge me even more. Right. So I was like, hey, plumbers, I'm gonna get this thing digged up. Dug up. Yep. You come on uh, Friday and start laying. Cool, cool, got it. So, got it dug up. Friday, I'm calling. Hey, where are you guys at? It's like we're on another job. I want another job. I'll, I'll be there Monday. I'm like, okay. Uh, so how happens? many days do you have in this thing at this point? I'm in it for like a month and a half now. And how okay. much money? Uh, seven to get in the door. Ten, seventeen now. Uh, ten for the foundation. Yeah. So I'm in it for like which is seven. cheap for forty nine peers. Oh, it's so that's yeah. way cheap. So seventeen and then three thousand demo. So I'm in it for twenty. Yeah. And then now the digging, yep. that was 3000 so 23 And so he had to come out on Monday. Well, guess what? A really nice rainstorm came oh, through. Oh, no, yeah, with your open, open holes. So all the dirt that was dug up went right back into the hole. Oh, and my gosh. Just your $3,000. There goes $3,000. That's horrible, man. And I was just like, oh, man. So I'm, I can't blame anybody. I'm like... Well, Note to self, same day you did. Yes, like, work has or, or just go with the plumbers yeah. and let them because it, that's their responsibility. Right. Right. So I called the guys back out. I said, hey, guys, it filled up again. Diggers, can y'all redo it? And he's like, well, you're going to pay me, right? I was like, I, I guess I had to. I mean, yep. you know, you don't work for free. He dug it up again. And it rained again. Oh, that's not even right. Like, whoa, I'm like, whoa. I think I'm done with this house. Yeah, I'm yeah. absolutely done with this house. So I just, <laughs> the devil house. So I just slapped some for sale sign day. and got it sold. As is. As is. But I took a L. I took yeah. a big L on this yeah. one. But I actually went back to the lender. I was like, hey, I know you told me uh, be careful with this house. And I didn't think it would be this bad but I know the notes 50,000 can you work with me so that's one of the things I learned I went back and negotiated the note I never thought about that so I went no, back and I said like, hey though, that's why yeah yeah so I went back and I said like, hey I can do can you do a payoff for 35,000 he's like I'm taking a, I'm taking a $15,000 hit on this and I was like but You've made yeah. your interest yeah, over the last years, how many years. five years interest. Yeah. And he's like... And I just cleaned your property up for you. Yeah, so he, he was like, I can't do that. I, I can do 40. So he knocked out 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Still I works. was like, great, great. I had a buyer at 48, I believe. Yeah, yeah. 48,000. Cash buyer. Cash buyer, 48. So, and I paid him 40. Mm -hmm. So I made eight, but not really. because Because right. he's already spent 30. 30 Three something. Yeah. Oh man, that's a car. That so is. that was a hit. That was that was my nightmare. Yeah. Not not for the faint heart. No. That's for sure. But when I closed on that house, I was so happy. Yeah. I've never been happy losing like twenty grand on that's, on a yeah, property. Yeah. Like Twenty six. Twenty eight. Yeah. I mean, somewhere there's a Honda Accord around driving around. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that 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 hurt. The previous owner is the one that just bought a new car after that. He's yeah. like, yeah, foundation's done, and I sold my and nine thousand dollars in dirt. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. So you want to do some deals? We're at towards the end. You want to um, do some deals that we can? You got any deals you want to try to sell on the radio? I don't know until I go to the office because we picked up. Three over the weekend, and I don't even know the addresses. So that's awesome. Thanks, so, but team. how does how does somebody get a hold of you in order to be able to like if if they wanted to potentially own or finance a property from you? Mm -hmm. How do they get access to that, or how do they yeah. look you up? Horrible credit, but I got twenty thousand dollars. 
I'm you guys can go on the Facebook and search Odd Brothers. We are getting ready to roll out a website for owner finance or any for sale properties that we awesome. have, cash properties. And also uh, look me up, Tang Nguyen, T-A-N-G-W-Y-N-N. Save me as a friend and I will uh, continue to put out information, tips. Very cool. Yeah. So, so too. if you had one thing that you've learned now, today, the mighty Tang win. if you could go back the 10 years, oh, man. if you could go back 10 years, years, what would be the one thing that you would tell yourself or to any other newbie investor that's that's watching this show? We may have said a lot of things they might not quite understand, okay. so you, where you're at now, what would you t- have told Keep yourself 10 wise, years ago? Don't say, like, don't eat that bad taco. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't buy a sports bar, no. <laughs> no, uh, Learn and 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 never stop learning. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I did understand that back in the days in college. You know, I went to college like learn, but the thing is, it depends on what you learn. Right. What I learned in college was, I mean, it was crap. I, I, I'm not using anything I learned right. in, in in college, right? And it's a whole different field. But if you are passionate or you love something, learn everything you can, and then figure out what to do to monetize it. Right. And. Mm-hmm. Every day, I'm learning something new about real estate. Learning different uh, strategies, tricks, ways to negotiate. That's yeah. what I love. And be creative. That's that's how I'm getting these deals and structuring it. And people are like, "How do you buy? How did you buy that 100 percent with no equity?" I was like, "Well, time. Yeah, you know, like the, I stretch out time to get my money." Not, not so from the <clears throat> other side of this, though, I just <clears throat> want to give him a quick confirmation and shout out. I had a guy call me on a pre-foreclosure list that I didn't know how to handle. He was too far behind on his payments. He owed too much. I typically cash flip houses. And so this guy owed too much. And the only person I knew to call was Tang. Tang ended up paying this guy's arrears off. So he paid all the past due off. He made, made good with the current tenants that were in the property. And now he's turned in what I would consider not a deal into a deal. And I got paid for it too. I mean, Tang went, Met, met with me and wrote me a check. So, And I would also encourage if anybody has a situation, whether it be an investor or a homeowner, that they're currently maybe behind a little bit and it may be not worth what they think it is or they just simply don't know, reach out to us, reach out to Tang. Because Tang, he's got a tool belt that's a little larger than some of us, especially mine currently. So Tang knows a lot on that uh, sub two side. So we're, we're open to any deal that anyone has. If you want to flip deal, set your house, construction, uh, maybe subject to a house that you're looking at. Yep. You contact us. One of us can get the job done for you. Uh, and speaking about the education and constantly training yourself and learning more about the deal, just want to throw it out there. We do have FlipUniversity.com with a bunch of free mm-hmm. information for you out there, free forms, and things that you can use, and videos online. Check us out there. Those forms that we're talking about, you can also look at RadioCashflow.com slash resources and get all the free forms there you want. Okay, a deal that we want to try to sell. Every every show we want to try to sell a go over a house that we can sell online. The deal spiel. Yeah, the deal spiel. <laughs> so, uh, Chase, you got one there, and you want to kind of go over? Yeah, um, I've actually got a couple. I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. You got about two minutes. Two minutes, real quick. So I got a mobile in Mansfield. I know Michael. Don't make fun of me on mobiles. I just recently started buying mobiles. And so far, they've been doing really well for me. My, really good for certain fires. My, yeah, my bread and butter has always been brick houses, but I've got a, mo- a mobile in Mansfield right now um, that if you want to reach out to me, I'd sell for cash. I'm looking for either owner owner finance buyers or cash fire buyers. I'll sell it at $55,000 right now. ARV on it is probably around 110 120 Reach out to me. I've also got four acres with four houses in Midlothian. And that one I need 270 for it currently cash flows because they're all rented. Currently cash flows 3500 a month, mm-hmm. 35 or 3600 bucks a month. Um, so, I mean, that's a pretty solid deal for a long-term investor. For me, I'm just looking to get rid of it. I just need to sell it to somebody else because I currently have too many other projects. Uh, I've actually got a lot more to go, but in two minutes, that's all I'm yeah, going to say. Yeah, that's what the best you can do. Yeah. Uh, I'll say I got three duplexes there in Cleburne. They're 1400 aside. Those duplexes are new builds. Uh, it's with one of my buddies there. They're looking at 330 a piece on those new builds. And then a flip that we came across, or flip or whatever type of property you want to call it, we came across this this weekend in Cleburne for 140 is the ARV, and we're going to need close to about 90, 95. Yeah. That's, that's our ballpark on that. that we're Perfect. Okay, so this show, we have some sponsors. We'll get some shout outs to those people. We got Kevin Cooksey with Texas Superior Insurance. 
he he will do these flips for you. If you want a, a, a six month builder plan, say you're going to flip a house or you're going to do any type of wholesaling, you want to be you got money out there, so you want to protect that money. Just call Kevin Cooksey. Uh, yeah, message us if you want some information on that. We got Kevin Shipman. I guess we just like Kevin's or whatever for <laughs> sponsors. These are guys that we actually know and, and or have used, so they're not just any Joe Schmo out there. Kevin uh, Chipman is a Wildcat lending. Used him once before in the past. I know Chase has used I've, him. Before. He's actually got several of my projects right now. Wildcat lending is awesome. So you only got twenty thousand, fifty thousand dollars, and you need to get into this house. Let's flip. You can give us uh, a message. We'll hook you up with, with the old Kevin at Wildcat. You're looking probably about a twelve percent interest payment yep. with three points up front. That's what you'll be looking at there. Yep, he's, uh, but he's quick. I mean, his closing, if you find a house or a neighbor or something who's in financial trouble and they have to close next week or the week after next, you're not going to be able to go to some traditional bank. They're going to they're gonna tell you 30 to 45 days. Kevin's going to close it in less than 10. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, Kevin, I think I did a deal with him. We closed it in six. Yeah. That's kind of what we were looking he's, at there. He's pretty quick. Okay. So, Tang, I want to say thank you. You're yeah. awesome. You're the man. Thanks. Tang, we Thanks learned a lot today. Me. I know I learned a lot today, and I know I'll be using you in the future for many, many deals. I'd love to be able to send some more homeowners to you as well as learn the process with you and partner with you on more deals in the future. I think we got a, a powerhouse. We, I'll call mm -hmm. this the power hour for the day because Tang is a heavy hitter, that's for sure. Big time. Thank you. Thank uh, you guys. Check in. Uh, share this show a lot. Get the word out there. We had almost 12,000 viewers when our first show was last Monday. We want to average this thing way up there. We want to get 20. Uh, this time next year, hopefully we're all over 100,000. We are going to just spill and spill free information to you guys to keep you going and flowing with what we're going to do. We're not just trying to hog this. We're trying to pass it out. All right. All right so that wraps it up. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.